Hi. Now, in an earlier video, I showed you about what displacement meant. And what I want to do in this video is extend this idea to drawing what we call displacement time graphs. I also want to show you how we can use these displacement time graphs to work out velocity. And what I've got here is a line where each space is one meter. And if we take to the right as the positive direction, if we move P, say, two units to the right, its displacement S would be two. But if we moved P to the left, say, one unit, its displacement S would be minus one. Now what I want to do is show you how we can draw displacement time graphs. We always have displacement on the vertical axis and here I've got it measured in meters and we always have time on the horizontal axis and I've got it measured in seconds. So if we had this graph what I want to do is show you how P moves in relation to it. Now during the first four seconds you can see that the displacement increases. It increases to two meters. So P is going to move in the positive sense, which is to the right, and reach a point here, two meters away from O. Let's call that point A. So it's going to head off towards A. And as I say, at four seconds, it reaches A and then stops. Because you can see the displacement still remains at two and it stays at rest for two seconds. So we'll just put that in as A. Now over this next stretch the displacement decreases towards zero. At 10 seconds P is back at O and at 12 seconds its displacement is minus one meter from O. So in other words it ends up to the left of O, one meter away. Let's call that point B. So what we've got then is at 10 seconds it passes through O. And because this is a straight line here, it's going to keep moving at the same speed towards B. So let's get P moving towards B. So as it approaches O then, it passes through at 10 seconds, carries on through and at B it stops. That's at 12 seconds. Now when it's at B, it now stays at rest for three seconds because the displacement remains at minus one. So I put that in as B. But during the last second from 15 to 16 seconds, it heads back towards O. So at O, it is now 16 seconds. Now another point worth mentioning is that velocity is given by the gradient. So, for instance, over this first section from O to A, you can see that P covers two meters in four seconds. So gradient is going to be two divided by four, which is a half. So therefore, its velocity is a half a meter per second to the right. Let's just write that in, that V equals 0 0.5 meters per second and it's to the right in that direction. Its speed is going to be half a meter per second but velocity remember involves direction. If we look at this section from A to B you can see that the gradient this time is negative three remember we're losing three units here for one, two, three, four, five, six seconds. So the velocity here would be given by the gradient and that would be minus three divided by six, which is minus a half, minus 0 0.5 meters per second. So its speed would still be 0.5 meters per second, but it's now negative, so it's heading towards the left. And on this stretch from B to O, you can see that the gradient is positive and 
for one meter it takes one second one divided by one is one so we have a velocity here v equal to one meter per second to the right well I hope that's given you some idea then of how we can work with displacement time graphs and the meaning associated then with gradient and when you get negative parts of the graph that the displacement is to the left of your point O. Okay.